Cheers, and welcome to our Fireside Philosophy on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve, and why don't you guys just introduce yourselves tonight. I'm Christy. John. I'm Patrick. I'm here totally against my will. <laughs> <laughs> we have a man a gu- with, with a gun over there pointing directly at Patrick. You can't really see the laser sight right now, but it's there. Um, and I'm Mike, of I, course. It's a, it's a, a infrared... Well, right. I wasn't even thinking infrared. I'm just saying we got a guy who's a dead shot who works for like the Mossad or something. You know. I just want to say that the camera adds like 15 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just gotta like you know like put case. your shoulders back a bit. You know, that's all you gotta do. Just put your shoulders back a bit. You know, nobody will know. Uh, today I'm drinking Oktoberfest by Carl Strauss, five percent. It's pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty good uh, Oktoberfest. Um. I think Oktoberfest pretty much tastes like an Oktoberfest, but... What does an Oktoberfest taste like? Like this. (laughs) (laughs) It tastes like Germans gassing Jews. (laughs) 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 Woo! Woo! Yeah! (laughs) We just... We went there! I wasn't ready for that. That was like... What were we in? Like a minute in? I had to feel that one coming for a mile. That was like a bad train. A bad train. I have, I have notes, so I'm just saying. I have notes. Somewhere on a cocktail napkin, before he got here, Patrick planned that out. I didn't plan it out. My superiors planned that out. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, so Patrick's the resident fed in our group. <laughs> Can you see I just let my hair grow just long enough? To make me look like an and and, 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 a, and you know in a weak beard right there for like week maybe two weeks you know mm-hmm. it's just enough to like you know get get incognito yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah oh and I think we need to have a moment of silence for the beer that was lost tonight <laughs> yeah there there was there was a bottle really? of beer that that hit the floor <laughs> yeah who killed the beer I I'm it almost, wasn't me <laughs> I'm almost you? kind of thinking oh, about it's like your bottle crash that's <laughs> all I got okay. nobody I'm thinking about like a rule for the future. No, you no pointing fingers here. <laughs> you drop a beer, you can't be in the podcast. Is that, should that be a rule? You break beer. Sorry, right, you're not in the podcast today. You drop beer. Yeah. That's why Dick Cheney's not here tonight. <laughs> Hunting accident. He was in the green room and then he dropped a beer and we said, "I'm sorry, Cheney, you can't be here." Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Your time is up. Yeah. Because we're authoritarian assholes. Mm-hmm. On that note, <laughs> are we we are doing the nature of authority tonight. From That's what I right. Understand. I'm gonna be talking about the nature of authority. I have three kids. I can talk a lot about the nature of authority. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> That's good. Because <laughs> mm. we got at least twenty five minutes to to fill. So, <laughs> like, so when we're talking about the nature of authority. I'm kind of thinking of that as being very broad, and I like it to be broad, so... I like broads, too. I mean, fair enough, likewise. I mean, yeah, you know... Broads, I mean, my guys, grandpa whatever. used to say that all the time, but usually if only if he was cut off in traffic. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, but so He has Jewish writers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to bring it back, you know? But... So, nature of authority, are we talking about, like, do we want to go on, like, the history of who's the first guy to put, like, some, like, gnarly, with maybe a couple leaves still on their branches woven together and said, this is my crown, listen to me? Or are we going to, are we going to go the psychological route? And I'm saying, like, anybody can kind of pick either one of those two or a third or a fourth direction. That's kind of what I'm looking at it. I'm That's, talking about Neil Armstrong. Okay. What about Neil Armstrong? Yeah, now I'm on now I'm, now I'm on a loop. Now, you, that, you that was the right out. angle right yeah, there. To... Let me just say that I'm I'm drinking jumping cow amber ale. <laughs> jumping cow amber ale. Okay, oh, all right. Oh, 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 you almost got Dick Cheney right I there. Just, you almost. I just, I just baptized my iPod. You know, I that say, was hey, for uh, for the homies. Yeah, yeah, for your lost homies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> John, why don't you tell me what you think about it? Uh, what what you think about the nature of authority? Yeah, so I was coming at it from or thinking from the uh, from the psychological aspect. That's what jumps out at me first. You know, is uh, uh, looking at it from the psychological perspective, where 
uh, we have this impulse to organize uh, under the premise of authority or, or, or in, uh, vesting certain people with with rights that we don't have to, that we don't have and that's the way that we on earth generally uh, are are geared to do right now um, through habit or whatever the case may be but yeah uh, I think it's time to change that <laughs> why <laughs> well let's start with it's working so well. <laughs> <laughs> it's working so well. Right? Humanity's never been healthier, as a matter of fact. We've never had such a stable population number. Everybody's happy. There's no reason anybody would possibly want to change what's going on in the world. No know? poverty or debt? Uh, no poverty, no debt, no, no, no ability to annihilate half the planet with the push of a button. None of that, you know? Like, it's pretty you know, stable, right? I think it starts with parenting. Like, in the, in the caveman. Absolutely. In the caveman, really, it's like... And, and I'm not so sure it was. I think you wanted to keep your children safe, so yeah. you 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 made yourself. I'm trying to look at myself. The cave woman made myself s appear to be the one with authority. Like, don't do that because I know better. Type of thing for your children, for the children's sake. And I think it just it's there's. I don't know about that. You don't think so? Well, as uh, I've, I I've known people who've traveled the world, and I've traveled the world, and uh, I knew these people who spent some time with a tribe in Papua New Guinea, and I understand this is the same with a lot of more primitive cultures, where by the time you can walk, sure your parents are still taking care of you as far as providing for you and things like that. But you're largely on your own learning what you need to learn. And then by 12, 13, you're a fully functioning member of society. So I learned authority? I mean, that was something... Oh, absolutely. Thing that I, learned? Okay. I, I just don't... All, all I'm saying is I don't think it started, back, started that far back. Okay. Right. Maybe, maybe 10,000 years ago with the advent of... Of lords, right? yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. If, uh, if for instance, uh, the Lord said do this and you didn't do it, and He puts you on a cross or cuts your tongue out or something like that, then to, maybe parents to protect their children would sort of mimic the right. mimic the Lord. Right. You know, like I don't want my child to be on. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I almost kind of look at it as maybe from a like a more historical perspective and and um, and by the way I'm going to have to to uh, accredit this to Ben Stone and if anybody knows Ben bad Stone Quaker. better yeah, yeah bad Quaker Ben Stone if anybody knows Ben Stone better than I do or if Ben Stone is watching this please contact one of us here <laughs> because you uh, put an ar an article on your website uh a while back about on Jericho on Jericho yeah on city of Jericho <clears throat> and that they found a very small you know prehistoric you know early man sort of a uh, fortification now this fortification was not big enough to house the entire population of the city of Jericho however well, small the area may have, yeah however small the, it may have been at the, the time area yeah so obviously that fort was meant to protect the people who were occupying the fort so, so the theory goes that it was some wandering bad, wandering band of marauders that decided to camp out there and come up with some, some sort of scheme of we'll keep you guys safe from the other wandering bands of marauders if you give us X amount of money per you know so crop much percentage or of your yeah. crops. And yeah, then we won't raid your farms too. Exactly. Yeah. So now that seems plausible to me. That's why I tell people that story. But again, Ben Stone, if you're watching, or anybody who knows Ben Stone, authority? please tell us the source of it. What's that? that well, that's kind of like the, that's kind of the start of the state. Is is, is right. what is it's, what that article is about? It's yeah. Start of gang, but is gang really authority? Was that really? But they they, no. they they claim to be. Okay. No, yeah. that that's that's all the state is is a gang. Yeah. Yeah. 
Right, yeah. I know the story. And so, and so, basically what, basically what, what happened was, is it started off, like, like, uh, like Mike said, uh, this gang became more entrenched by, uh, by taking, uh, they basically set up a bargain with the, with the farmers so that they wouldn't raid them, uh, and so it made it safer for the farmers, it made it safer for the gang, and the gang found it easier to protect the farmers from other gangs, and then over time, uh, one gang conquered another gang and grew into basically a state, uh, and partnered with religion, creating the, the, uh, what, what am I thinking of? Well, no, no, no. I was thinking uh, the divine right of kings. Yeah, there you go. Hmm. Uh, mythos. Because um, I, I think at some point, religion had to have mixed with, with this, with this uh, proto-state in order to form the idea in people's minds that it had legitimate uh, authority. Well, Samuel as well, right? Is Samuel, isn't it about the judges, right? So you wanted to well, yeah, biblically, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, authority, when I look at authority, people looked at religion and God and as being authority over their lives. And so, yeah, it would be natural for authority to mix with these gangs, then called the, you know, three states, the three, you know, yeah, where it would be a natural um, transition to what we now call. And we can talk about the whole psychology behind behind religion and, and the reason why humans created gods in the first place. Um, I, I think it does tie in, though, a little bit. I think yeah. that... It's I, trifecta, I, I think yeah, that's... Um, state, religion, and parenting, trifecta. Yeah, because, I mean, if you... You know, if you say, well... well we, I think we, the whole... We, if we... I'm oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I think the whole author, authoritarian parenting came from the religion state right apparatus response. apparatus yeah but i i th which then perpetuated it early on i i tend to think that it was like well they're like okay well so here's our authority because you know we're not going to rob you because we're the local gang and see so we're only going to take so much from you if you just agree to give us this little bit and we're going to stop the other gangs from coming in but then somewhere along, along the line, after a couple of years of this, you know there's some some teenagers, or, or maybe not even teenagers, maybe it's just some farmers that are over the bullshit, but somewhere along the line I see teenagers involved in this because, you know, <laughs> because of the general fuck you nature of most teenagers that I know. Well, they're just, you know, they're well it might have been eight, nine-year-olds. Oh, yeah, because, exactly. Because eight, nine-year-olds are the teenagers of, you know healthier societies yeah so you know there's sort of thing like well why the hell do i have to pay these guys money to not attack me and that seems kind of weird that seems like bribery isn't that more isn't that just stealing in itself so at one point or another you have to be like okay well so here's do you the think thing. there's a pride issue there then like the parent the the kids are coming to their parents and saying why are you putting up with this bullshit and yeah, the parents and are I like do. you know what i'm your father that's how it is. Well, that mean, does that maybe that does sediment say, that a little bit. My parents say I'm your father or I'm your mother. They just won't, well, sweetie. That's just the way it is. is it? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> you know, I mean, at eight years old, it really was. I think all of us probably question at a young age is why we're here today. But yeah, it's just and see, I didn't look at them as my authority figure. It's just they. Oh, they were definitely my my parents are definitely an authority figure in my house. Okay. Yeah. I just, yeah. So I didn't question that. At eight or nine years old, I, I mean, I I, I kind of went with that. I kind of went with that authority, like, all the way through, you know. Um, I, I went to university, and, and I was just looking for somebody to tell me what to do, you know. And when I got to that point where there weren't really any answers for that, I was still... I was still looking for somebody to tell me to go left instead of going right, you know? And... How'd you get here? Mescaline. 
<laughs> well, you know, so they were telling me all this authority exists, and that didn't make any sense. And to cement that whole thing that it didn't make any sense, I did some hallucinogens, and, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Christy, I think we explained at the beginning of this podcast that he's a fed. Right. <laughs> so he's immune to all these insane No, 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 no. But seriously, seriously, seriously though, I, I want to speak seriously for a second. Okay. Um, so I've never sold any hallucinogens in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm kidding, man, don't worry about and it. And I've it's never bought any hallucinogens from anybody here in the right, circle, right, yeah. except for maybe him over there. <laughs> <laughs> Off camera, of course. Uh, wink, wink, I right, nod. Right. No, no, no. So, so I was 14 years old, and um, I read a. Um, I don't even know how I came to this book, but I read um, the teachings of Don Juan. Oh, I've heard that's good, yeah. Right, the Yaki Way. Yeah, yeah. So it was published by the University of Berkeley Press. Um, and at that point in my life, I hadn't done any drugs or... I hadn't even drank uh, any alcohol, for that matter. But... Um, just a baby. I know, I was, <laughs> I was just a babe. I was just a babe in, in 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 the lamb's wool, you know what I'm saying? Right. But I read this book and I had my mind open to different experiences of reality. And um up until that point, like I only had the experience of reality of what was presented to me. And um the only separation I had from that was in literature whether it be from that book or from other books I, at the same time I was reading uh, Douglas Adams uh, who wrote The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy um, I was also reading um, uh, goodness uh, Rufino Tamayo who was a um, visual artist from Mexico um, and he was actually, I should add, a, a, a pro-state artist. Uh, he was coming from the same, like, um, ilk and same uh, time as, like, Diego Rivera and those that were, like, rebelling against the state. But he was very much in line with the state. But um, it was just an, an, an opening of my mind to different experiences of reality. And... Um, I, did it crack the egg? Did you start thinking differently at that point in time? I did. did. Yeah. I did. And, and you know, the, the thing that's interesting about it is, is I did that without any of these hallucinogenic substances that they were discussing or talking about. And um, what happened was this, was I looked at everything and I was like, whoa, why why are things the way that they are and i mean i know that sounds really kind of rudimentary but um at, at the time i was i was catholic i was um i was confirmed in catholic church and i was actually teaching confirmation oh. um so i was like bringing other youths uh to this conception of reality um and uh it wasn't until um, I was about uh, 18 years old when I finally smoked some pot. Like, I mean, I know that sounds ridiculous, but, like, I smoked some pot, and I was like, whoa, okay, um, everything is not as it seems. And when and you lit, and you when you lit the first bowl, was it? Did, did Jimi Hendrix instantly start playing? <laughs> just you like right off the bat, you're just like Jimi Hendrix, like. Okay. Okay. No, I'm kidding. Okay. No, continue with your story. I couldn't help myself. Yeah. yeah right, so. I know. I know. Nacho is miraculously apparated in his lap. What 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 I'll say about Jimmy <laughs> is um kind of uh confluent with uh the the movie uh white men can't jump okay and wesley snipes keeps telling uh woody harrelson that uh he can't hear jimmy right right and um up to that point like i'll, I'll keep going with the music like i i, okay. I um I, I was a classically trained pianist 
Um, I played lots of music. Um, I played with the uh, Las Vegas Philharmonic. Oh, awesome. And um, mm. I was really in that zone. And uh, without any mind-altering substances, like, I, I got elevated to another... I mean... I hate saying this on camera because it sounds so ridiculous. Like, I got elevated to another plane. Um, you, you, you stimulated your mind, man. Shit. To be really even more stereotypical, right? I know. Like, but, I know. I hate, I hate this whole discussion. But no, no, that's but, fine, though. I mean, it's okay to be like, no, you had some psychedelics and it changed your perspective on life. There's nothing totally. wrong with that. Yeah. That's what well, before you did. To do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I so I mean, this was all before I ever really started experimenting, yeah. and I mean, essentially what happened was I started hearing the world differently, and um, everything became, and, and, and where it is right now, like, I mean, everything became so simplistic for me. Did you question authority? Yes. Okay. And so I questioned authority, and everything became very, very simple for me, and I was like, that's why they have the drugs. I just got that. I you thank you. Know what? Like yeah. I've been thank you. I've been thinking about that. Drugs at a young age, and I question things at a young age. Right. And it's just. So what happened to me was like before the drugs, before the drugs, because I mean, believe me, there were plenty of drugs. <laughs> right. <laughs> there were a lot of drugs, but before the drugs, Upper what Standard happened was, was I started hearing things differently, and I was like, mm -hmm. why? Why are we here? You know, why? I don't mean like in some esoteric sense, like why are we here as humans? I mean, like, why are we here as the human race? Why are we at this point in time with the things that are going on here? And like at that time, I was remembering being little and there were trading cards, um, tops trading cards, like, like oh, yeah. baseball cards, yeah. right? Yeah. But instead of having like Wade Boggs, or Don Mattingly, yeah. uh, who were popular at the time, there was Colin Powell, and there was uh, George George Bush yeah, Senior. The, the Gulf oh. War trading cards, I oh, have I those. Still. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Have, dude, hang on to those fucking yeah. things. You, no, do you want to know? I I have somewhere. I did take off the plastic. I'll always regret taking off the plastic, but I have the original Invasion 2003 Gulf War fucking trading cards. Yeah, in the pack. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if you, yeah. the O3. I did take I'm off the plastic, like, but what are you gonna do? I'm talking about like 89, 90, like the first Gulf War. Yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was this yeah, whole I like shield does it storm pack. cards. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There was this whole build up and I had little um, little like figurines for my Dungeons and Dragons no way. that I like incorporated into Dungeons and Dragons that it was like the um, the the tank with like the 16 missile thing like and then, I mean so I mean this was all becoming a part of my reality and and I was looking at it going what the what? fuck is this shit is it one of those things you know? where you, we, it, yeah. was it one of those things where you started to think that like maybe m more of what you're perceiving as reality is kind of more of an illusion given to you because that's kind of what I look at the nature of authority it's like I'm not saying that like objective reality doesn't exist like the fire doesn't exist or the concrete doesn't exist okay. what I'm saying is is that like what you've been given is told is this is what your reality is you have to work in this Perhaps some of that the is not really, yeah, the so, yeah, exactly. Right. The software yes. versus the hard yes. drive, like you know, this is your hardware. Your hardware is the fire exists, the concrete exists, all that. But the software is authority. <laughs> Wait a minute, right, right, right. that That's seems a little bit weird. Maybe I can change that a bit, and that is the, the you know, yeah, you, know, you can you, you, the program becomes sentient and. Somewhere along the line, that does that does tie into robot sex, but maybe we might have time for that. I'm not really sure. Let's so, see what we can do if, with, robot, with robot sex. But listen, robot sex aside, what happened to me was this: was no. uh, oh, wait. was I saw all these things. <laughs> we still have time for that, I think. I yeah. know. I think so. so I saw all these things, and I got really fucking confused, and I was like, "Where the hell am I? What is reality?" And I found myself in college. And I was at a really, like, politically dissident college. Um, I was at... Uh, University of Lebanon? Berkeley? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I was at the uh, Berkeley of the East. Um, or yeah, as... Um, yeah, there you go. As... Um, What's that? As, 
Yeah, Wesleyan, as as many people back there call it, they call uh, Wesleyan the Berkeley of the East mm. or Berkeley the Wesleyan of the West, um, or whatever. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, so I was at this college, and um, what happened was this was um, I thought I knew which way was up, and uh, we came into this week which was called. Um, uh, I can't, it had something to do with like uh, uh, sexual identity. I can't remember what the week was called. It was like, you know, sexual freedom or something like that. But there were these like tags all over the campus that said like, attack the heteros. And like, I got really like, wow, that's, I know. that's wild. That's like kind of scary. Right. So I got really like annoyed and like upset and scared by this. And it only took me like, a little while before I realized I was like whoa they're tagging this because this is their reality and it like totally just mudded up my brain like I was like holy shit like the world is not what I thought it was you know and like prior to that I was one who was like oh yes yeah, same sex marriage and everything like that and, and and I was like on board but like until I saw like the physical like manifestation of these ideas i i really didn't really feel what i was saying what i was fighting for so mm -hmm. to speak and and it just like threw me around as far as what authority was and who was in charge and that was what made me start thinking about what our reality is and and, and and I really think that ties in to like where we are now, um, looking at like, you know, what's physically going on in the world. And at the same time, understanding like our interpretation of that, because fuck man, like what, what you read in the news, or even if you like want to subscribe to the you USA second, Today, because that's a reliable source every time, right? Yeah. USA Today? Yeah. I wasn't even talking about that. But like, <laughs> I was talking about Al Jazeera, but yeah, like, but yeah, yeah, yeah fair like, enough. There's, there, there's really there's, fucking same thing when you when you talk I mean, about it. Like, there, I mean, it's this it's this facade of what's actually going on, and, and and that was when I first was awakened to to the idea that like what what I thought was reality. And what the world was trying to project as reality <clears throat> were two totally different things. The Matrix. And I mean, I thank you. Yeah, I mean, I I, I hate to sound story all. Totally. I hate to sound all Keanu Reeves on that shit, no, but like, totally I woke the fuck up and I was like, whoa, I am you, you Agent took, Anderson or whatever. You you took the red pill. You decided chicken wasn't worth it, right? You know. You know well, what? Like, like if know. I could do it over again, I'd take the fucking blue pill, and I wouldn't even be sitting here right now, no. and you wouldn't even be Don't looking at my that. sexy fucking face. That's <laughs> a, I mean, Don't so say like, that. hey, hey. You're happy right now because I, I I took the red pill and yeah no we're very happy you get this you get this you get this <laughs> the intensity that is Patrick uh, listen just, just real listen. quick I think I think uh, yeah. along the same lines uh, language is very important too yeah um, people uh, for instance uh, the American government started bombing Libya mm. or not Libya Syria. Syria. Yeah. Uh, this uh, last cu uh, yeah. couple of days. That's not a country. And you'll Whatever. hear you'll hear people <laughs> you'll hear people walk in and be like, like we're bombing Lib or we're bombing Syria. No, we're not doing anything. Some people. Did, did, did you get a backup call from somebody in France that says we need some help in? Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Don't stand hope. Yeah, yeah, no, but, but, yeah. Um, yeah. Same sort of thing. Yeah. And I I can never remember this word, but it's the word that the the. German SS used Amtsprache. Amtsprache. Yeah. <laughs> and basically it's this language of authority whereas well if somebody else told me to do it then I'm not I'm not personally responsible. No, sir. You know? Bureaucratic speech. Like but let me just say since we're on camera, I have nothing to do with the war against IS 
ISIL or whatever. ISIL, ISIL, ISIS, ISIS, Islamic State. I really like ISIS because I like the like tie-in. I like the tie-in to like the ancient Egyptian like thing. It's creepy and weird. ISIS. Well, unfortunately, you know. But it, so if we're talking about like nature of authority and all that sort and of stuff, robots well, have well, if they if they become yeah. sentient and they have the if they have the ability to do their own thing, would you have the I authority to say authority. if you, <laughs> if you could have a robot that that robot. that would be sentient on itself, would you be able to have sex with it? You know, I mean, if it was sentient, it could and, make its and, own decisions. And would it would it be rape if you were the programmer? <laughs> Ooh, we're getting into something and deep. Unfortunately, but we're out of time, though. Yeah. We'll, okay. We're not going to be able to approach robot. that subject tonight. <laughs> Damn. Uh, maybe we'll get into robot sex again next week. Next time. Um, but not not tonight. Yeah. Have a good night. Rats. Have a good one. <laughs> Have a good weekend. <laughs>